the Equalization Fund Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 43 of 2019, by Honorable Kasait Kamket, Member of Parliament. Members are coming in to the House, and uh, remember earlier on, I told you that um, in this period of uh, coronavirus, uh, several uh, mechanisms have been put into place to allow as many members as possible to be able to contribute to the motions of the House, including having members sitting in the lounges, members sitting outside in the tents, members sitting in the lobbies, and also in the chamber. Only 40 members are allowed to sit in the main chamber, but there is provision in the other places which is allowing spacing, social distancing, and uh, members are able to come in and discuss business and be part of the sittings that go on with the various motions that uh, are going on in the House. Later on, there'll be an amendment to the standing orders to facilitate virtual sittings of the House. Remember, with this current uh, situation going on around the world, most meetings are now being done virtually uh, through various mechanisms of, uh, of Zoom, WebEx, uh, Hangouts, and so on. And so this afternoon, the vice chairperson uh, of procedure and house rules will put on the floor of the House and a motion to amend the standing orders to facilitate virtual sittings of the House. The House of Commons has already done that, and uh, many other parliaments around the world, and indeed the Parliament of Kenya will also be looking into how to be able to do this so that as many members are able to contribute to the motions and the, the business in the House. That this House adopts the fourth report of the Procedure and House Rules Committee on Amendments to the Standing Orders, to facilitate virtual sittings of the House and its committees laid on the table of the House on Wednesday, May 6, 2020, and pursuant to provisions of Article 124 1 of the Constitution and Standing Orders 265, they resolve to amend its standing orders as contained in the schedule to the report and orders that the amendments to the standing orders as contained in the schedule to the report shall come into effect on Monday, the 18th, May 2020. So indeed, as uh, the world and uh, the globe continue battling this pandemic and life has to go on, the House may be considering some sittings by virtual, meaning members may not physically come into the chamber, they could be in different places and they are able to contribute to what is going on on the floor of the house. These are, are really uh, different times we are living in. Later on, there'll be a motion to establish an ad hoc committee on the COVID-19 prevention, response and management by the Honorable Gunjiri Wambugu, member for Nyeri, and uh, he will be presenting that on the floor of the House as part of the business that uh, will go on. And uh, the membership of the committee has been spelled out. It includes the Honorable Ngunjiri himself, the Honorable Dr. Amos Kimunya, the Honorable Dr. Makali Mulu, Honorable Yusuf Hassan, the Honorable Alice Wahome, the Honorable Florence Mutua, um, the Honorable Paris Tobiko, the Honorable Peter Kaluma, the Honorable Mish Hamisi, the Honorable Beatrice Nyaga, the Honorable Janet Ongera, the Honorable Dr. Otiende Amolo, the Honorable Gadoni Wamshomba, the Honorable Godfrey Ososi, the Honorable Dismas Barasa, the Honorable Joshua Kandie, the Honorable Daniel Kamuren Tuitoek, the Honorable Patrick Munene, the Honorable Anthony Oloch, the Honorable John Kiarie, the Honorable Abdi Omar Shurie, the Honorable Major Retired Bashir Abdullahi, and the Honorable Teddy Mwambire. This is a committee of 23 members who are expected to be able to be part of this that has been uh, proposed by the Honorable Wambugu. Indeed, now it's about time for the speaker to come in and uh, making his way in. Uh, procedurally is uh, the Speaker of the National Assembly, 
Honorable Justin Bedan Muturi. He will preside over the sitting this afternoon. We welcome you to this sitting, courtesy of the Parliamentary Broadcasting Unit and the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation. It will, sorry, the Parliament uh, FB page, Parliament of Kenya FB page. It's now time for prayers. Good afternoon. Let us pray. Almighty God, who in your wisdom and goodness have appointed the office of leaders and parliaments for the welfare of society and the just government of the people, we beseech you to behold with your abundant favor as your servants who have been pleased to call to the performance of important trust in this republic. Let your blessings descend upon us here assembled and grant that we treat and consider all matters that shall come under our deliberation in so just and faithful manner as to promote your honor and glory, to advance the peace, prosperity, and welfare of our country and of those whose interests are committed to our charge. Amen. We can start. Order number one, administration of oath. Order number two, communication from the chair. Order number three, messages. Order number four, petitions. Order number five, papers. Leader Majority. Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the following papers on the table of the House today, Wednesday, May 6, 2020, 2020, in the afternoon sitting. Number one, legal notice number 55 of 2020, relating to the banking and bracket credit reference bureau regulations and its explanatory memorandum from the National Treasury. Number two, the annual performance report for the financial year 2018-2019 from the Ministry of Defense. And finally, three, the statutory six months preference and reservation report pursuant to section 157, subsection 12 and 13 from the Public Procurement Regulatory Authority. Next. Order number six, notices of motion. Order number seven, questions and statements. This uh, member for Kajero Central, Honorable Memusi. Member for Kajiado Central, is he among those ones who may be on the walkway? Let's get a member for Tesla South, Geoffrey Omuse.
Next uh, request is by the member for Mwingi West, the Honorable Charles Ngusia Nguna. Honorable Kanchori Memusi. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, person to standing order number 442C, I wish to request for a statement from the Chairperson Departmental Committee on Administration and National Security regarding the porous borderlines in the country. Honorable Speaker, the porous borderline points across the country and in particular Namanga border is risky to the people of Kenya following the outbreak of the coronavirus disease of 2019. Livestock crossing from Tanzania to Kenya unchecked through porous border, borderline points commonly known as panya roots. Honorable Speaker, it is against this background that I seek a statement from the chairperson departmental committee on administration and national security on the following. One, what steps is the government putting in place to contain crossing of people and livestock in the porous border, border points along the Tanzania-Kenya border, in particular areas around Namanga town uh, during this pandemic? Uh, two, could the government consider closing down the movement of people in Namanga and his Banya border points, among other uh, others, only with the exception of essential services and goods. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. The Honorable Koinange, is he in the, in the chamber? Yes. Is he in the chamber? Very well. Uh, the, the response will be from the, that uh, committee chair. Uh, it will be transmitted to the chair through the leader majority. Can I get the member for Teso South? The Honorable Muse? The member for Teso South? If it's not there, the member for Mwingi West? Please, Honorable Ngusia. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, pass on to standing order 442C. I wish to request for a statement from the chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Education and Research regarding government preparedness in the country on the e-learning due to COVID-19. Honorable Speaker, as a result of COVID-19, the first term of education calendar was cut short by three weeks in all schools, colleges, universities, and other institutions. Further, the ministry extended indefinite closures by another one month to 4th June of 2020. This challenge has disrupted the learning of many students, including examinations and completions of the learning periods and graduations. Even though e-learning was proposed as an alternative way for the learners to continue with schooling and learning at home, it does not help learners residing in rural areas without electricity, gadget equipment, or internet accessibility. Honorable Speaker, it is on this account that I seek a statement from the Chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Education and Research on the following. One, could the government state the appropriate mode of e-learning and its status on the impacts of learners during the COVID-19 pandemic? Two, what is the government's immediate interventions to the majority of learners who cannot access gadgets, internet, and electricity? And three, what is the government intervention to parents 
who paid fees both in private and public institutions which were not utilized during the period when the school institutions were closed. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Chair of Education, Honorable Mele. Well, if he's not uh, inside the chamber, he can... Uh, Honorable Musa, your request uh, is to the Chair of Education, who is making his way into the chamber. Honorable Meli, the, the request by the member for Teso South is about um, many issues to do with the, the, the long periods of uh, closure of uh, schools, the issues to do with e-learning, and uh, of course, um, written to it is that uh, the fact that, which is a, a reality in the country, that not all parts of this country have electricity, and not all pupils and students and even their parents have uh, the, the appropriate uh, gadgets to even uh, participate in that uh, e-learning. In a nutshell, the, the request for statement by the Honorable Musa is uh, on those lines. How long do you think it could take you to Honorable Meli? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I uh, have had uh, the issues that Honorable Musa has said. However, these are the same issues that I have about three statements here by Honorable Mashali, Sabina Chege, and Honorable Martin of Ndiwa. And they all uh, discuss issues concerning uh, closure of schools, e-learning, and many other issues. In fact, yesterday, we, the CS was supposed to appear before the committee, but he gave, sent apologies that there was a cabinet meeting. He has actually uh, asked to appear before the committee tomorrow, and he has actually agreed that tomorrow he uh, uh, appears before the committee, but the clerk was just talking about the issues of venue, which actually was really giving us a hard time. However, uh, I promise that maybe I don't know if this will go on recess, but if it is by next week, we'll be able to bring back the statement, especially on e-learning, which is actually a thorny issue for all parents and for everyone, because not, the, not all parts of the country are connected, I think. Did, did, did you grant the request to meet the CS tomorrow? Yes. Uh, we, in fact, the CS actually requested that by tomorrow, uh, tomorrow he'll be ready to meet the committee on a wide ranging of issues, especially concerning education. So, Honorable Musa, if you, are, if you have space, if there will yes. be space for, for you, perhaps it will be advisable if you could also attend mm. uh, In the fact, we will, uh, if he is going to attend, maybe virtually or physically, he will be welcomed. Thank you. Very well. Member from Mwingi West, Honorable Ngusia. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity given to me. Honorable Speaker, password to the provision of study in order for to see. I wish to request statement from the chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Transport, Public Works and Housing regarding construction of Kibwezi, Kitui, Kabat, Migwani, Bodoni Road. Honorable Speaker, the road was commissioned by His Excellency the President in 2017 to provide an alternative route for vehicles traveling to Machakos, Makwen, Kitui, and northeastern counties, where Honorable Majority actually comes from, and is traffic along Mombasa Road and Nairobi County as such. Honorable Speaker, it is against this background that I seek for a statement from the chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Transport, Public Works, and Housing on the following. What is the status of the remaining 25 kilometers? Could the ministry confirm whether the road, the already tarmacked stretch between Ketui Town and Kabat was part of the contract? What steps is the ministry taking to ensure that 
the contract is not abandoned midway. What measures has the ministry put in place to ensure the project will be completed? When, when is the construction of the road and visage to be completed? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Chair of uh, Transport, Honorable Kosing. Uh, you are in the chamber. Please, you can uh, give an indication. Put on the intervention. Uh, I thank you, Honorable Speaker. One week is sufficient. One week, Honorable Bongusia. Very well. I see there's an intervention of the member for Arienda, Honorable Otiende. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I wish to bring to your attention for your direction. Um, that uh, the member for Kimilili is adorning his uh, Kibra hat, uh, which is not, uh, to my knowledge, a religious hat. <laughs> is it in order for the member to wear that form of hat <laughs> and elsewhere uh, in this chamber, I mean, other than in Kibra? <laughs> or perhaps only in the village. Honorable Didimas Barasa, can I see you? Can you rise so that I can make a determination? Uh, obviously, that is, that, that is meant to excite villagers. You have, you have to, to go and throw, throw it away or um, withdraw from the chamber. That is not, uh, that's not part of the, the clothing expected in the chamber. Member for... You show, yeah? But you took the other Robert Gishimu. Honorable Robert Gishimu. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, before I request for this statement, I would like to uh, seek your directions. I sought as another statement, which was uh, directed to the chair. Um, Departmental Committee of, on Administration and National Security on 22nd of April. And uh, I've never gotten any response to the statement that I sought. And this particular other question is also directed to the same uh, chair. It was on the issue of uh, preparedness and the criteria and how the, 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 the ministry is or has prepared itself in respect of the food relief to the needy. Well, I may not be able to address that particular issue now, given that uh, you know the calendar of the house. Even this one, the, the menu that uh, requests which are there, obviously they have to to await, even those ones where the Honorable Kosing says he can deal within a week, uh, unless he, they will be giving the responses uh, virtually, but uh, certainly outside the period, because this particular period is traditionally reserved for various committees to consider, to consider budget estimates, the annual estimates for the national government the judiciary and the legislature. So it is traditionally traditionally reserved. This one month period is reserved for committees to engage with uh, the various ministries to try and uh, address the issue of estimates. So maybe leader majority can uh, you can ask, you can, make, you can make your request and then uh, it will be transmitted to the chair of uh, that committee alongside that other one which you say so that they can uh, look at them uh, together. Very well. Very well, Mr. Speaker. I hope they will both be answered uh, at the same time. Mr. Speaker, my request for statement today is in respect of the welfare 
of the village elders, block leaders, and Nyumbakumi volunteers across the country during the COVID-19 pandemic. Honorable Speaker, pursuant to Standing Order Number 42C, I wish to request for a statement for, from the Chairperson of the Administration and National Security regarding the welfare of the village elders, block leaders, and Nyumbakumi volunteers in Geshogo constituency and across the country during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Honorable Speaker, a national government administration officers, GAO, and particularly chiefs and assistant chiefs, including the village elders, 